Great to see you. It's certainly been a while. It's certainly been a lot that's happened since I last saw you, that's for sure. Yeah. So uh, we're looking ahead now to exciting times in 2022. And um, yeah, today, I guess, we're, I know you've got some exciting news to share with us around the FCTG independent model, some big things coming in early, early 22. So um, yeah, can you, can you share with us what, what's happening? Yeah, well, you know, we're pretty excited about it. It's not only in Australia, of course, we do do this independent model. Um, we've been doing it in New Zealand for ages and uh, it's the same in North America. So mm. it's, it's, it's not new, but we've got a lot more um, resources behind it and uh, you know, technology and, and other uh, products for the independent model. You know, a lot of people are thinking about what they're going to do in travel now. There's been so much has changed. A lot of people have left the industry, many people coming back. Um, you think this is going to be a, bit, a big draw card for some of those people? Yeah, well, um, we certainly think it will be. I mean, there's already quite a few independent you know, uh, travel advisors around. Um, and, and we have uh, some, you know, for example, in South Africa, it's uh, the flight centre independence. So there'll be a variety of different categories people can come under. But um, certainly a lot of it is giving, giving the independents the tools they need to be able to do their job easily, to make sure they've got really good product and, um, and, it, and it's easily accessible. It's, it's a whole range of independence, which, you know, we have done some uh, through um, areas like Travel Partners and um, over the last three or four years. But this is one thing, particularly in Australia, that we're going to be um, we're really focused on and making sure we've got the products that the independent uh, travel advisors really value and, and so they can do their job well, so they can make good money out of it. And, um, uh, and, and you know, as you, as you know, Matt, this has been a tough time for everyone over the last uh, nearly two years now. And um, I think people getting back on their feet, particularly if they can you know, grow uh, their own business mm -hmm. so that, um, you know, and build that up into even into a team uh, for, for some people is, you know, now is the time, the next next few, um, the next uh, six or 12 months, we, we think it, it'll, it's going to be very, very busy. And, uh, yeah, just with the borders opening Queensland and uh, South Australia, Victoria, New South Wales now, um, it's go there's going to be a, a, a huge boom, we believe, in this. And I think the independent uh, travel advisor is, is going to, really be able to reap some of the benefits now. Yeah, fantastic. Are you already seeing um, inquiry already, Screw, from new people sort of wanting to dip their toe back in again and have a look and see what it's, what's, what it's all about? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, obviously um, over the last uh, 20 or 30 years, uh, we've um, grown, and, grown and trained a lot of people in this industry. And uh, so quite a few of the people who are already independent do know what to expect from flight centres. Um, some of some of them uh, that have been competitors to flight centre probably have some uh, uh, some doubts about whether they'd like to come into the fold. But you know, I think our attitudes changed over the last uh, few years to this, and we we like the idea of people who are independent coming on board, buying through us, using our technology, and uh, generally growing their business with us. So they don't have to be you know, a 100% uh, in the fold to uh, to do well out of this. So, yeah, we, we, I, I think it's pretty exciting what's happening. And as I said, it's not only in Australia, but Australia is probably, um, you know, we've come somewhat lately uh, to this. And, and bear in mind, you know, some of our um, other competitors and that, they're struggling to, just for the same reason that just about everyone in travel and uh, airlines and, and um, airports and tourism, you know, have had such a tough time over the last uh, 18 months. So hopefully we can offer that solidity of, um, of finance and, um, and other resources that we can provide for the independents. Yeah, great. So you've obviously got a few, you mentioned, you touched on it briefly there, but you've got quite a few different offerings and really, I guess, something for every advisor, be it the, sort of the higher end luxury end around travel associates at home or with the store model. But then also you've got travel partners. And as you say, you can be independent as well and not and literally bring your own, um, your own business to the fore. Exactly. I mean, I, I think 
it depends on what um, you as an independent travel advisor want to do, whether you've got a team, whether you work from a shop or from a corporate space or you work from home. Um, you know, a lot of the resources are going to be there for, uh, so you pick and choose. Um, as we, we also you know, will have, if you want a branded offering, um, you'll be able to do that. Um, mm. And there's still some details being worked out on some of these things, but we, we just want to make sure that people who want to be independent, want to run their own business, do have um, the, we can provide them with the resources, with the product, that um, they can uh, decide what they take, what they don't take, what they buy, whether they buy from us or they don't. We obviously would like them to generally buy through us and that will mean we can have more buying power from our suppliers. Uh, we, we, we do um, have a very uh, good relationship with most of our supply chain and, and it's very important to us. And if we can pass that relationship on to um, our independence, that's, that's one of the things that's going to be important to us as well. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And obviously, significant investments gone into this from yourselves at the back end in terms of all of the back of office and everything that you're offering as part um, of this model. I mean, is this, again, times have changed so much, there's been so much has happened and, and the industry is literally just changed in so many ways. Do you, do you see this as, as the future of travel advisors with, with stores in mind and what that looks like? Yeah, I think it's a combination. Um, you know, it's it's about um, having really good access to the right product is probably the really key thing. Mm -hmm. And also, a lot of the independents have their own um, swag of customers, uh, but also some do need uh, to get that inquiry and to get the customers in. We think there'll be uh, a, a quite a big demand for this independent person who wants to run their own business just as, but I think the company owned or the franchised um, will still be a, a, a significant part, but I think the independence, which, which is probably now about 20, 20 to 25% of the market, we think it'll probably go up to more like 30 to 35%. Um, as, as people like that flexibility, as people, you know, people like working from home or like having their own business, setting up their own, um, you know, bricks and mortar shop front or, or expanding it into, into a number of um, different businesses. So, you know, it's, it's, it's the gamut of um, the whole gamut of how people like to work and, and how they like to be entrepreneurial and, and independent is what, what I suppose we're trying to cater for those needs and do, do as well as we can or make sure that we have a really good offering so that people do not only enjoy being independent, but actually can make really good, um, a, a good return out of it and a, and a good, uh, a good income from it. Mm. And so talking, I guess just you, you guys have obviously got a massive global footprint and you've got, you know, a real lens on what's going on around the world when it comes to travel and particularly the selling of travel. And I guess, you know, the large parts of the world are, are way ahead of us in terms of getting back in the game, particularly UK, US. Are there things that you're seeing there around the appetite for becoming an independent or just things that, 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 yeah, that are happening over there that, were, that could sort of drive things here as well? Yeah, but particularly, you know, North America, particularly the States has been fairly, um, yeah, particularly domestically, it's mm. been quite active um, for now for, well, the best part of the uh, last nine months. Mm. And, um, you know, the independent um, people who are independent, I mean, they're over 50% pre-COVID, of uh, travel advisors, travel agents, uh, were independents even then. So you can imagine coming back, it's probably more like, uh, it's gonna be more like 60, 65%. I think the other thing, Matt, is um, business travel, because one of the things I think most of the independents will have seen overseas in particular, but now in Australia is, initially it's the VFR market, you know, the leisure VFR, visiting family uh, is the first thing that happens. And then the tourism, you know, people really want overseas holidays or even interstate in Australia. But um, then, then, then there's a business travel. And I know a lot of our independents, particularly um, in the States and Canada uh, and South Africa, 
have uh, have yeah, reasonably high um, high wealth individuals as customers, and they they also do uh, particularly if they're running small businesses, they also have quite a bit of business travel and and premium travel. So that's that's the sort of um, customer I think um, we will see here with our our independence as well, uh, if, if, if it's to go by how it works in the States as well. Mm. Yeah, that's really interesting. So let's just talk for a second about retail. If you're a retail agent right now, you're bricks and mortar, or you have been, maybe you're thinking about coming back. What, um, what do you think, what sort of, what would it take to get somebody back? What would be the draw card to get someone to move over from, I guess, the store environment to uh, becoming an independent and maybe a mobile agent? So it can be quite scary for a lot of people making that transition to move out of the, the comfort of the four walls to actually going out there and doing it yourself. What would you say? Yeah, I think, you know, um, Flight Centre brand uh, in, in particular and Travel Associates as well, actually, uh, have traditionally been a bricks and mortar model. Uh, a lot of a lot of them in shopping centres where there's a lot of walk past traffic. But one of the things I think we've seen um, which uh, holds well for independent uh, travel advisors and agents is that probably over the last five to seven years, um, it, it's, it's a lot less about walk-in traffic. Uh, it's a lot more about phoning or emailing or texting. And uh, I think most of the people who are independents now will understand that. You know, it's not a matter of just having a really great location and people will just walk in through the front door. So it really uh, holds well for uh, people who want to be independent, uh, perhaps want to work from home or like the idea of a shop front, but it doesn't have to be uh, a really high... Um, high rental shop front, for example. It, it, people can, um, if, if, if you are branded and you, you want to brand it, whether it's your own brand or something we can provide, you know, it, um, it's more about the location and the, um, you know, the, uh, the billboard impact of mm. your bricks and mortar rather than just getting a lot of walk-in traffic. There, there will, in certain locations, you'll still get a reason now. But I think most people now will tend to be quite happy to do the initial inquiry, initial bookings on the phone or over email and uh, have the option perhaps of visiting, walking in um, sometime during the transaction, during the process. So um, I think, um, I think you know, being independent, you can have the best of both worlds. You, you can have a, a relatively low rental, maybe higher profile location or you can work from home and uh, do your um, do you do a lot of your business uh, over the phone or or by email or text. So um, I, I, that's why we we predict that um, a lot of people will will uh, like the independent model. Uh, they still want to have uh, interaction with other people um, in in the independent world, and uh, hopefully that's what we can offer them. Yeah. So I was going to ask you about that. So. One of the lines that you use, which, which is the home of the entrepreneur. So that word entrepreneur gets used a lot, which I, which I think is really nice. And Flight Centre, of course, has always been, as I say this, full disclosure, as a former employee, has always been huge on training, development, and of course, the conferencing, networking element, as you said, around connecting with people has been a huge, big deal. Is that that's still a big part of the independent model as well, if you want it? Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, there is a limit to... And the reason why people become independent is, um, yeah, because they, they do want to do their own thing. But we certainly will be offering the opportunity to, to train and to do and other things like that. It'll generally be a user pays model, but so people aren't paying for something that they don't use. But uh, we'll certainly, that's one of the things that we are developing and will develop further as things go along to make sure that um, people get whatever help they need. You know, obviously, the training in the systems is the basic stuff, but I mean, uh, training in terms of leadership or mm. you know, customer service and all that sort of thing is 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 what people also want. Not 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 just for themselves, but if they are working with other people and employing other people, that they can actually, um, you know, that we do have the resources to be able to um, get that training, so that uh, and, and that's also part of the interaction with other people. Who are doing who are doing a similar 
you know, independent model. Mm, that's great. And we, there's a lot of talk now about, you know, us moving into this golden age of travel for travel advisors. We've, uh, travel suddenly got extremely complicated, a lot more, uh, bringing a lot more anxiety for travelers around all of the varying levels of restrictions, which are, of course, changing all the time. Um, have, what, what would you say to, to, I guess, travel advisors in general and particularly independents around how they can capitalize on that as an opportunity? Yeah, I think you're right. Well, I, I know you're right. The, um, you know, travel, international travel is not easy at the moment. You know, uh, it will get easier. Uh, but um, I, I went to uh, London, for example, in July, August, um, and, and worked from there for most of those two months. And if I didn't have our trusted advisor, I could tell you, I'd still be in London, um, <laughs> or I might be in jail even. Um, <laughs> It is, it, is, it is complicated. They will smooth these things out fairly quickly, but the next six to 12 months is going to be a bit of a golden era for travel advisors and agents, just because um, if you're travelling internationally, uh, you're, you're, you're a very brave person if uh, you want to do it all online. Um, even the most... Uh, online savvy person is going to struggle with this over the next um, probably probably 12 months. And once people have done it two or three times, you know, travel, well, then they probably can go back if they're an online, if they're a savvy online uh, travel player, uh, two or three major overseas trips, and you'll probably then know what you need to do. If you remember, you, you might be too young, but if you remember uh, 7-Eleven in 2001, Yep. Um, it was like that for maybe three or four or five months once you get used to the security. Mm -hmm. um, now we just take it as um, for granted, you know, and, and, and it will be the same with something like this uh, COVID restrictions and, you know, the things you have to do. But the next 12 months, um, I think it's a great, great time for independents to build up their customer base. Yeah, I was going to ask you, just looking ahead into 2022 and beyond, it's um, obviously a crystal ball job, but um, where do you see the growth? I know we've had significant growth in recent weeks with Fiji, for example, which has been hugely popular. Do you think people are going to want to travel a little bit closer or take more breaks, but shorter breaks? Or what do you, is there anything that you see there? Um, yeah, look, I, I think, that, and, and you can see this from all the numbers, People initially will be tending to travel to places they see as safe, like Fiji, mm. but also uh, UK, Europe, North America. Um, this is where most, you know, this is this is not too surprising because that's probably the bulk of our markets. We we still haven't seen too much in Southeast Asia or India, um, mainly because those countries generally haven't opened up much, but. Hopefully, New Zealand will open up eventually, and um, you know that will be a big, a big destination initially. But that may not looks like it mightn't happen until um, April, which <laughs> is quite surprising. But I yeah. think that the the markets that will be, and you made the point, the markets that will be a bit, um, people will be a bit wary of, will be some of the Asian markets for the reason that they will tend to have more restrictions by the looks. Africa and South America, just because of the low vaccination rates, will probably, people will probably stick to the tried and true places like North America, the UK, Europe, over the next 12 months. Um, and hopefully um, the, those other countries will um, do a lot better with their vaccinations um, over the next year or so. Or, you know, with the Omicron um, variant, it may well mean that um, the um, being much more contagious, but much milder by the looks, that a lot of these third world countries will actually get immunity from infection. Um, and uh, so that could be a, well, it could end up being a positive, um, depending on uh, a range of things, which we're not totally clear about yet. Yeah, but overall, screw are you feeling generally optimistic about 22? We've, we've surely we've turned a corner. I know you just mentioned Omicron, and there will undoubtedly be more, <laughs> more things that pop up. But overall, you're feeling optimistic about the direction we're heading in. Yeah, we're we're getting up in flight center, and this is globally. We're in 23 countries. 
Uh, we're getting back to about 40%. And this is a mixture of leisure and corporate of pre-COVID levels of TTV or of, of gross um, revenue. So, you know, that's not too bad when you consider the restrictions are still in place. So I'll, I'll be surprised if in 12 months time, we're not up to 70, 75% of pre-COVID. Uh, so, you know, I think most people who are in the, in the, in the independent model, um, they probably won't be back full steam over the next six or 12 months, but getting into that three quarters of their previous, um, whatever they did previously, so I'm, I'm pretty confident of that. I mean, it's been a terrible um, 20 months for everyone. Um, but I think the people who come through this now are in a really good position. And, um, you know, there'll be, there'll be bumps along the way where there'll be a little bit of, um, you know, two steps forward and one back. But I think um, the next, um, in 12 months time, people who've, who've stuck at it, Will be doing pretty well, and um, and they'll be building and growing their business uh, quite nicely, I think. And and you, you know, within a couple of years, particularly if you focus on leisure, I think we'll be back pretty much to pre-COVID levels. Amazing, amazing. Well, that's great to hear. <laughs> and last question for you today, as he's mentioned, it's been a terrible time for everybody in the industry, but I guess there's also been an awful lot of positives as well in terms of things we've learned. Um, what have been some of the big takeaways for you personally that you think you've, that you've, you've yeah, that have come out of this? Uh, well, I, I think, um, I, I don't like saying anything um, too uh, controversial, but I think the way most Western governments have handled this has not been very good. And I think they will have learned, um, I don't think they've learned the lessons yet. But I think they will learn that this is what's generally been done in, um, particularly in the Western democracies, just hasn't been the right way to do it. You know, locking people down, shutting borders. Uh, and the people it hurts most, of course, are the people in the third world, mm. um, and, or, or, or even the second world. You know, it's, some of the South Pacific nations are really struggling because of the lack of tourism. And we just haven't thought about a lot of those things. So I think the, the big lesson will be a, um, a, a lesson from Western governments and, and, and first world countries that um, locking everything down and shutting borders in a pandemic like this, where you, know, you can identify the people at risk and luckily we've got a good vaccine now, is probably not the way to go. Um, so I think you know, as an as a industry, I think, um, we will see a different approach the next the next time round. And let's face it, it's like it'll be like the flu from what you hear. We will have this yep. various um, uh, manifestations of COVID around for a while. But I think, and I think you can see this already in Australia that the governments have accepted that what they did with the lockdowns and border closures. Um, well, they're certainly thinking twice about it now. I think from a, from a company point of view. And you know, we had to take a lot of pain. We had to stand out a lot of people. Um, but I think we've tried to make sure that we've looked after our people, try to get them back on board as soon as we possibly can uh, by raising money from um, you know, the, the public. And obviously this means um, diluting shareholders and that, but trying to make sure that accepting that our people, um, whether they're independent or, or full-time in-house, working people um, are, are, are the key to our business. And, uh, you know, okay, we need technology, but um, technology is run by people and, and our people are the most valuable asset. I think that's, that's clearly showed up in, um, in the last 20 months. And uh, hopefully, you know, in the industry that we realise that as well. If, without these key people as travel advisors, um, there's a whole range of industries that would would suffer, uh, you know, particularly in tourism, hospitality and, and travel. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Well, on that note, I'd just like to say thank you so much for today and for chatting to us. And um, yeah, here's to a, a bigger and brighter 2022 and beyond where we can all get back to doing what we love on a consistent basis, as a, hopefully as opposed to being on the roller coaster constantly. And uh, yes, yeah, congratulations to you and, and everyone at Flight Center Travel Group as well for, um, for, yeah, for the things that you've been able to do through this regardless as well. So thanks very okay, much. Thanks, thanks, Matt. And um, we'll see you down by and by sometime. <laughs> you absolutely will. I'll see you on the beach. Okay. <laughs> thanks a lot, Scrooge.